Doki. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think we're joining on both platforms. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. And tonight we're talking about having a fling with gluten and dairy and what are the consequences basically. And so um, with Thanksgiving rapidly approaching, tonight is Tuesday, November 24th, with Thanksgiving happening two days from now, a lot of my patients and a lot of you are probably wondering, well, what should I eat? And I have gone through this for however long I've been in practice doing this, I don't know, 10, 11 years, and 10 or 11 holiday seasons, uh, being with individuals, counseling, saying, okay, Thanksgiving's coming up, or whatever holiday you're celebrating is coming up, and we need to be attentive, you need to stay on, on track, and uh, ultimately, I would come in the next week, and invariably, uh, most people had gone off the diet, they'd gone off the diet, in a big way, and diet sounds, maybe has a pejorative term, but you know what I mean, whatever nutritional plan they were supposed to be adhering to, then, um, you know, likely they went completely off the rails and we're kind of back to square one. And good morning to everybody who's joining. And yes, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving here in the US, so, so awesome. So. Anyway, so then it was a matter of trying to go back and clean up, so to speak, some of the damage of what had been done. And I think just a simple understanding or just my viewpoint on what is happening when we have gluten or dairy, for example, on Thanksgiving, what is that doing to you? So the study that I frequently cite is from 2015 the, by Dr. Fasano. Dr. Fasano is literally the world's foremost researcher on gluten. He is like the expert. And he did a study where he took, he did uh, a small intestinal biopsies on individuals who had celiac disease, which was active, non-active celiac disease, people who you would consider to be gluten sensitive. These were non-celiac gluten sensitive individuals and then normal individuals. And so he took these pieces of intestines and then he put them on a microscope slide and then he sprinkled gluten onto the intestinal tissue and found that the tight junctions, which are where each intestinal epithelial cell is bound together by what you may hear as the zonulin occluding complex, he found that the tight junction literally opened up. And it was at that point he coined the term that Gluten is a zonulin toxin. So basically, when you eat gluten, it is a toxin to proteins in your intestines that bind each intestinal cell together. So now we have that, we all have that, uh, that piece of it, so to speak. So what is it going to do to you if you have gluten? It may do absolutely nothing. Um, a lot of people eat gluten and they feel completely fine, even though he showed that gluten breaks down the intestinal lining. However, you may have something go on that you don't necessarily feel. And so a lot of individuals who have autoimmune disease don't necessarily feel that they have a gut problem, but they may manifest symptoms in another way. And this is what I've seen. I've seen a lot of autoimmune patients go off the rails during the holidays, eat the foods that they shouldn't. And when they do that, then all of a sudden their autoimmune symptoms tend to flare. And it depends on who you talk to, but it's kind of like, it's widely known in the functional world that if you have gluten, it takes a while for it to get out of you. Gluten is what? Gluten is the glue for many baked goods. You can go on YouTube and watch uh, people blow like literally what look like balloons out of dough. If you put forced air, compressed air into dough, you can make a balloon. So gluten is that sticky. So it takes a while for the gluten to get out of your intestines, which is where if you're working with a, from a functional perspective with someone on their nutritional plan, and they've been really strict on, let's say something like autoimmune paleo for a month, and then they go in and they eat gluten, then it's like, oh gosh, you know, it, it's painful from the practitioner standpoint, maybe painful from your standpoint. So that is potentially what can happen. If you have something like diabetes, well then once this, this 
intestinal lining opens up, now pieces of bacteria, endotoxin is going to be absorbed more readily. Go back and watch my broadcast on psoriasis recently, where I talk about absorption of endotoxin. So that may be facilitated by eating gluten, particularly dairy. So now you have your, your pie and your ice cream. And that may happen. What are the long-term consequences? Maybe nothing. Maybe your blood sugar goes up the next day, which you're already expecting, or maybe, you know, you just don't feel well. Maybe you feel depressed. Go back to the study in 2014 by, um, oh gosh, I was sure his name. I think it's Peter Gibson. He's the, the non-celiac guru. And he basically showed that if you eat gluten unknowingly, you may not have digestive symptoms, but lots of times people will have effective symptoms. So they're going to feel more depressed. They may feel down, which we refer to as dysphoria. So those are things to consider. Let me just jump to our comments and hi, hi, hi to everyone who's joining. And yeah, so good to see all of you. Some really familiar faces and names that are near and dear to us. So, so yeah, thank you all for joining and I hope you all are doing well. So what is the other option? The other option that I have been telling my people for a number of years is have a gluten-free extravaganza. So no matter, and I'm not telling any of you to do this. If you're not my patient, I'm just telling you what I'm recommending to my people who I'm working with on a regular basis is that to have a gluten-free extravaganza. So there are so many products now that you can get gluten-free. You can get gluten-free bread. You can get gluten-free pie crust. You can get gluten-free whatever that you want to have on Thanksgiving. And so if you have that, then you can have a gluten-free Thanksgiving. You can have a gluten-free favorite holiday. And in my experience, having it's like a totem pole. So gluten is like the worst thing you could eat. And then maybe down here, maybe dairy in that circumstance for my autoimmune patients, just as general recommendations. Again, not telling you that you need to abstain from these foods. So in my experience, the gluten-free extravaganza circumvents the major blow up, so to speak, in terms of progress and keeps people relatively on track, mitigates side effects. If you have dairy and you have a dairy intolerance, maybe you feel poorly, but maybe you're not going to feel as poorly as if you had 12 rolls and the gluten, or excuse me, and the, the pumpkin pie and the stuffing and whatever else. Like I used to eat on Thanksgiving. I always ate 12 rolls because the Thanksgiving rolls are delicious. So uh, I love it. I love it. So we have great, great, great uh, topics here and great questions. So is buckwheat okay? Yeah, buckwheat. Proportionally, buckwheat is not the same thing as wheat. Buckwheat is technically a seed. Uh, is buckwheat maybe bad in the long term? In my experience, yeah, if you eat it all the time because it's a really dense carbohydrate uh, or it's really high in carbohydrates and that tends to imbalance the gut microbiome. But um, in my experience, it's not as bad as wheat. So, so what's the take home point? We're sitting there on Thanksgiving and you have a beautiful dinner roll staring you in the face. Try to say no. It's Tuesday night. Some of the stores are still open. Wednesday, tomorrow, the stores are open. So if you can get some gluten-free goods for yourself to satiate that desire to eat those, those yummy Thanksgiving foods, maybe a good idea to do that. Um, so yeah, that's my takeaway home, home point. If, if with all this being said, you still have gluten on Thanksgiving and, um, and you're not feeling well, then give us a call. So happy holidays, everyone. Thank you all for joining sincerely. I'll be back tomorrow night. That's the aim with a broadcast on headaches and hopefully it's good. Okay, take care.